Welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be looking at the Veritas edge trimming plane and comparing it to the Lee Nielsen number 95. Stick with me. Here they are side by side. We have the Veritas and the Lee Nielsen. And the very first thing that I want to point out before anybody yells at me, yes, this Lee Nielsen is very old. <laughs> Um, when you go to their website, you can see that they don't even use this screw anymore. Um, this looks different. The iron's thicker, and I'll go over that stuff as we're going through the specs. So, just wanted to let you know, but let's take a second and just look at the planes. All right, so to review some of the stats, the Lee Nielsen comes in at one pound, 1.2 ounces. The Veritas comes in at one pound, 5.8 ounces. Not that big of a difference, but as you can see, there's a huge size difference. So lengthwise, I measured the fence right here. I didn't measure this flare out, okay? The Veritas comes in at six and an eighth. The Lee Nielsen comes in at five and three eighths. Now, this was something that I found interesting that if you guys have the new version of this Lee Nielsen, please measure this for me because the mouth size on these is pretty significantly different. So the Lee Nielsen mouth opening is 1 8th. The Veritas is 5 16ths. I'm thinking that's because of the iron thickness. So the iron thickness for the Veritas is 1 8th. For this Lee Nielsen, it's 1 16th. When I look at their website, they changed the thickness of the iron, and the newer ones are 1 8. So I'm curious to see if that thicker iron resulted in a thicker mouth, which I'm really thinking it does. So again, if you have the new one, let us know down below the mouth size because it makes a difference. Um, this one, I was getting a little bit more tear out with when I was taking thicker shavings. This one didn't really get tear out because Look how open that, or how closed that is. Now, the other thing with the size difference is the max cut width, which would be this part right here. So on the Lee Nielsen, it's 7 eighths, and that's all the way to this edge. It's completely maxed out. For the Veritas, it is 1 16th. So you can edge trim a one inch board with this one. You cannot with the Lee Nielsen. Price-wise, Veritas for an A2 or an O1, it's $132. For a PMV11, it's $139. Now there is gonna be an argument, some people like to argue. For planes like this, for jointry planes, I really like the idea of O1 because I would rather that edge roll over than it tear out the board. PMV11, edge isn't gonna roll over, you're gonna get tear out, A2, the same thing. Um, you guys can argue down below about that, that's just kind of what I've noticed in my time of woodworking. Price-wise for the Lee Nielsen, $225, and that comes with an A2 iron. This one is old, this is an O1 iron. So again, that could have contributed to the fact that I was getting tear out with this one and not with this one, because this one is an O1. Now in use, the Veritas was just more comfortable because it's bigger. They have this right here that fits your hand really well, whether you're gonna push or pull, that's really comfortable to hold on to. The Lee Nielsen is just smaller, so it's not as comfortable to hold on to. However, I really liked this adjustment mechanism. So as you can see on the Veritas, it's the wheel with that little nib. I'm always worried about breaking that nib. So if I'm gonna do any kind of significant advancements or retractions, I'm loosening the cap to adjust this because I don't wanna break that nib off. If I'm only going slightly, I'm not gonna worry about it, but keep that in mind because they have a few planes that are like this and I find myself worrying about it. Let me know if I need to or not. If you guys have made significant, you know, this is really tightened down and you switch this and it's got no issues, let us know. If it breaks, let us know. But for the Lee Nielsen, you can adjust it while this is fully tightened down. You don't have to worry about this at all because it's a lever. So while you're in use, it's gonna be tough to show you guys, but while I'm using it, when I'm advancing to try to take a cut, I'm just pushing up, pushing up on this. And that was really easy to do as I'm going through the cut. For the Veritas, you can do the same thing, it's just the wheel. So you're adjusting this wheel as you're going, but again, little nib, I'm worried that's gonna break if everything is tightened down. Retracting the irons, when it comes to the Lee Nielsen, retracting this, if you're retracting it far, you might have this cap slip off the screw. 
It only happened to me once while I was using it. Now, let me mention something. I got these for my friend Kylo because I didn't have any. I wanted to do a video on them, but the one that I do have is the AMT. The AMT is basically a copy of the um, Lee Nielsen, a cheap copy of the Lee Nielsen. It works okay, but if you retract this iron, this slips off almost every single time. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna put a washer in here because I don't care what it looks like. The other thing with the AMT is the iron's just too long. You can't like retract it enough to get fine shaving, so I need to grind that down. But AMT is a good option too, copy of this, but I do wish it was bigger. <laughs> Now, both of these planes have screw holes in the fence here because what you can do is you can take a piece of wood and set it at a different angle. So instead of this doing 90 degrees every single time, you can go 45 degrees, 33 degrees, whatever you want to do by just attaching a piece of wood there. So I really like that feature. I'm not sure if Stanley has that or not. Um, let me know down below if you have a Stanley and it has the holes or doesn't have the holes. Now, when it comes to these planes in use, you have to, have to, have to, have to Make sure that you have equal protrusion on both sides of the iron. Have to. If you don't have equal protrusion, you're not going to get a 90 degree angle. I tested it because I wanted to see what happens if I push the iron to the other side. Will I still get a 90 degree angle? You won't. You have to make sure that you have equal protrusion. On the Lee Nielsen, I find it easier to get that because they have these flat sides here. So what I do is I just loosen the cap and I push right in the middle and it'll reference against this flat side tighten it down, and then boom, you have equal protrusion. With the Veritas, you can do the same thing. However, there are set screws. So what you would need to do is move these set screws out of the way and then do what I did on the Lee Nielsen. If you leave the set screws advanced, watch. So I'm gonna push, oh, it's already to the side. So let me just, that, ah, okay. I'm gonna push in the middle. See how far this one went to the side? There is no, that's not equal protrusion. See that? This side's a lot heavier than that. So you have to make sure that you're adjusting this to match where you need it to go, tighten it down. The set screws on this plane, I kind of feel like they just get in the way. Because of how easy it is to take the Lee Nielsen and push this way and square it up, I don't see the point in these. These set screws don't hold the iron in place. They create a fulcrum point. Now you can tighten them down to hold them, however, this back end is still gonna move. Unless you have them so pinched that it's not going anywhere and then you won't be able to adjust anything if you do end up having not equal protrusion. So if you guys have the Veritas, because I am kind of torn on these set screws. On the other planes, I really like that they have set screws, but on this one, I'm not a big fan. If they put set screws up here, both, different story because then you can make sure these are equal and then boom, bump it up against like that, like I was doing with the Lee Nielsen. So let us know down below if you have the Veritas, you like the set screws, don't use them, whatever it is, let us know. Now in using this plane, I like it better when the board is up and down in a vise. Okay, that was a lot more comfortable to me. I could just grab the plane, pull it across. Um, you can push it too, but for my board, it would have been against the grain. But I went to Lee, Lee Nielsen's website because I was getting some stats and stuff from there and checking prices and I saw that they put the board down flat on the bench and kind of used it like a hand plane to where you would have the cutting edge hanging over the edge of the board. So that I liked maybe for certain applications, but it was kind of annoying to try to figure out how to hold it. Um, Lee Nielsen does have this indent right here, which would be for that, but I didn't find myself using it that way. Putting the pressure down this way, it, it didn't, I don't know how to explain it. Um, maybe you guys will be able to see it. I mean, Veritas kind of has the same indent, but this one was just easier to hold on to because it's bigger. All right. So this part, or I guess the outro of the video, um, I've debated on this because I've had these for a couple weeks and my initial impression was they're a luxury tool that's just more effort than it's worth than the results that you get to get a square edge on a board. There are so many other different methods that you can use. So to spend $139 or $225 on a plane that all it does is do edges of boards, definitely a luxury item. Um, they're also kind of finicky to set up. 
but I didn't want that to be my answer. I talked to a couple of my friends and I mean, they agreed with me. They said, oh yeah, they're, they're a pain. I don't like them. But I didn't like that. I wanted to play with them a little bit more, experiment with them a little bit more, get more comfortable in using them because the only one that I have is the AMT and like I mentioned, it has issues. So I wanted to try a higher quality plane. I'm torn. I learned how to set them up better, I learned how to use them better, but I still kind of feel like they are more effort than they're worth because there are other ways to get a square edge on a board. But when I did practice with them more, again, I got more comfortable, I got more used to them, I was able to set them up faster, I was able to get really good results as you can see. Um, the choice is going to be yours. They're both great options, both of them also have issues that I struggle with. I like the size of the Veritas better. I like that it's bigger and easier to hold on to. I wish the Lee Nielsen was bigger. However, I, I'm i kind of surprised by this. I think I like the adjustment mechanism on the Lee Nielsen just a little bit more because this little nib on the Veritas, I'm worried about breaking it. Um, if you're doing slight adjustments, fine, but with how annoying these are to set up, having to loosen the cap to make an adjustment, that's kind of annoying. With the Lee Nielsen and it just being a lever, you can just adjust on the go. And once you have the the cap really tight, adjusting that is very easy because you just push slightly. If your cap is loose, then it's going to move all over the place. So keep that in mind. The one thing that I did notice is when you're using this on the edge of the board, it was almost like it burnished the side of the board where the blade was. It basically put a, or excuse me, where the fence was. It put a burnishing mark there, which you can see in the video here, you can see a distinct line where that fence was referencing and basically burnishing the wood. So I wanted to see, you know, if I put some wax on here. So what I'm using is the Cottrell Tool Wax, uh, or wow, Cottrell Tool and Woodwork Furniture Wax. I love this stuff. It's some of the best furniture wax that I've ever used. Um, I think he's got his website up is running, so I'll put a link down below if you're interested in that. But I wanted to see if I put wax on this, can you still see that line? Because I could feel it. I could, I could feel a difference between a plain surface and that burnished type surface that I got from using these planes and the pressure on them. But once I put wax on there, I couldn't see it. I could still feel a difference, but it's not something that a non-woodworker is going to notice if that makes any sense. The other thing I noticed is while it was up in the vise, I didn't really get that burnishing mark. But when I had it down on the table, which is what you see on the Lee Nielsen's website, they show it down on a table and you're planning it this way versus it being up in a vise and you're going this way. That's when I got more of a burnishing mark versus it being up in a vise. And that's gonna be a preference thing, whether you like it in a vise or you like it flat on the table. Try them both out. It might depend on your grain direction, the type of wood that it is. Um, what the project shaped like, all that kind of stuff. So, if you have these planes and like them, let us know because I have seen some people use these very successfully and it seems like they use them a lot, so they like them. But a lot of the guys that I've talked to said they don't like them, they're more effort than they're worth. The choice is yours. Hopefully this helped you make a decision. If you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, feel free to let us know down below. Kyle, thank you again so much for letting me borrow these. This isn't the first plane that you've let me borrow either, so I, I truly appreciate you for doing that. I um, hope you guys enjoyed, and have a good day.